ever felt the urge to offer a patient an ice chip with severe dysphagia who has been previously recommended for NPO status, only to be met with a look of panic from your supervising SLP? Ice chips can be a refreshing treat, but they can also be a source of anxiety for patients and clinicians concerned about aspiration. Today, we're jumping into the world of ice chips and dysphagia management, exploring the potential benefits and risks, and discussing strategies for safe and effective use. Hi, I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist since 2008. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders, and I'm the founder and CEO of the MetaSLP Collective and MetaSLP Education author of the best-selling book, So You're Having Trouble Swallowing, and host of the Swallow Your Pride podcast, which has over 5 million downloads. Welcome, I am so glad you are here. The allure of ice chips, benefits and considerations. Ice chips hold a unique allure in the world of dysphagia management. They're not quite a liquid, not quite a solid, but they offer a tempting sensory experience that can be both therapeutic and comforting for our patients. The benefits of ice chips. Ice chips can be a fantastic way to keep patients hydrated, especially those who have difficulty swallowing liquids or dislike the taste of thickened liquids. They provide a gradual and controlled way to introduce fluids, reducing the risk of aspiration and dehydration. Sucking on ice chips can stimulate the muscles involved in swallowing, which may help improve swallowing function over time. Want to make your arms stronger? Exercise your arms. Want to make your swallow stronger? Swallow. Patients who aren't allowed anything to eat or drink are deprived of this opportunity and their swallowing muscles inevitably atrophy and get weaker over time. So stopping the patient from eating and waiting for them to recover is sort of like waiting for a kid to learn how to swim, but never letting them near the pool. Plus, ice is cold. You didn't need a board certified swallowing specialist to tell you that, did you? The cool temperature and texture can provide sensory feedback, promoting increased awareness and coordination of the oral and pharyngeal muscles. Ice chips can be incredibly soothing for a sore throat or mouth, which can be common in patients with dysphagia, especially those who have been NPO for longer periods of time. They can also provide relief from dry mouth, a frequent side effect of NPO status, as well as the use of certain medications. Alex, a 78-year-old gentleman, was experiencing significant difficulty swallowing thin liquids. He had been placed on a honey-thickened liquid diet, but he found the consistency unappealing and struggled to consume enough fluids. He often complained of dry mouth and discomfort, especially after his medication rounds. The SLP, recognizing the need for an alternative hydration strategy, introduced Alex to ice chips. He was initially hesitant, fearing he might choke but the SLP reassured him and provided careful guidance on how to safely consume the ice chips. Alex quickly discovered the soothing relief that the ice chips provided, and his fluid intake increased significantly. He also reported feeling more comfortable during mealtimes and throughout the day. The risks of ice chips, navigating the dangers. While ice chips offer several advantages, it's crucial to acknowledge the potential risks, particularly for patients with severe dysphagia or cognitive impairments. Ice chips can melt quickly, making them difficult to control in the mouth. This can increase the risk of aspiration, especially for patients with impaired swallowing reflexes, decreased coordination, or a weak cough. Aspiration occurs when food or liquid enters the airway below the level of the vocal folds, potentially leading to complications such as aspiration pneumonia. While this is unlikely with a small amount of clean water in a patient with good oral health, the risks increase if the patient has a high level of medical complexity and a high susceptibility to infection. Depending on the size of the ice chips, small fragments can become lodged in the airway causing choking. This is a serious risk for patients with dysphagia, especially those with limited swallowing ability or decreased awareness of the bolus. Choking occurs when the airway is fully obstructed, preventing airflow to the point that the patient can't talk or breathe. Barbara, a 75-year-old woman with moderate dementia, was admitted to the hospital for a urinary tract infection. She had a history of dysphagia and was on mildly thick liquids. During her hospitalization, she became agitated and restless, often pulling at her IV lines and attempting to get out of bed. The nursing staff, in an effort to soothe her and keep her hydrated, offered her ice chips. However, due to her cognitive impairment and impulsivity, Barbara quickly consumed a large amount of ice chips leading to a choking episode. The quick response of the nursing staff and the SLP prevented a serious outcome, but the incident highlighted the potential dangers of ice chips for patients with cognitive impairments who aren't supervised closely. We're already deep into the potential benefits and risks of ice chips in dysphagia management. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to catch my future videos on dysphagia management and patient safety.
And be sure to share your thoughts and experiences with ice chips in the comment section below. Have you had any close calls with ice chips in your clinical practice? What strategies do you use to minimize the risks for your patients? Who have you found benefits and who might not be appropriate? Don't forget to stick around until the end for a freebie. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Striking a balance. Strategies for safe and effective ice chip use. Now that you've been properly scared out of giving any of your patients ice chips ever, let's talk about how we can do it safely with carefully selected patients. It's all about finding the right balance between the potential benefits and risks and tailoring our approach to each patient's individual needs. It's crucial to carefully assess each patient's individual needs and swallowing abilities before introducing ice chips. Consider factors such as the severity of dysphagia, the patient's cognitive status, and their ability to manage secretions. A thorough swallowing evaluation, including an instrumental assessment like a modified barium swallow study or a flexible endoscopic evaluation of swallowing can provide valuable information about the patient's swallowing physiology and help identify any potential risks. Start slowly. Observe the patient carefully while they're taking ice chips. Look for signs of aspiration, such as coughing, choking, or anterior loss, such as drooling. Consider beginning with small amounts of ice chips and gradually increasing the quantity as tolerated. This allows you to closely monitor the patient's response and adjust the amount as needed. It's also important to provide clear instructions on how to safely consume the ice chips, emphasizing the importance of slow and controlled intake. Sharon, a 65-year-old woman with head and neck cancer, was experiencing significant pain and dryness in her mouth and throat due to radiation therapy. She had difficulty swallowing liquids and found thickened liquids unpalatable. The SLP, after careful assessment and discussion with the medical team, decided to introduce Sharon to ice chips. They started with a small amount, closely monitoring her for any signs of aspiration or discomfort. Sharon tolerated the ice chips well, and they provided her with the much needed relief from her dry mouth and sore throat. As her tolerance improved, the SLP gradually increased the amount of ice chips she was allowed, always emphasizing the importance of slow and controlled intake. Sharon was grateful for the refreshing comfort that the ice chips provided, and they became an important part of her hydration and comfort. The ice chip protocol developed by Dr. Langmore and Dr. Pasegna is a valuable resource for evaluating swallowing function during ice chip consumption. It involves using fees to assess the patient's ability to manage ice chips and identify any signs of aspiration or penetration. This protocol can help clinicians make informed decisions about the safety and appropriateness of ice chip use for individual patients. A link to the full article will be included in the description below. Ice chips can be a refreshing and helpful addition to the diet of patients with dysphagia, but they should be used with caution. By understanding the potential risks and benefits and taking a careful, individualized approach, we can help ensure that our patients enjoy the benefits of ice chips while minimizing the risks. Interested in learning more about safe and effective approaches to dysphagia management? Join the Medical SLP Collective. Check us out at medslpcollective.com. We offer a wealth of information and support, including in-depth resources, expert webinars, and peer-reviewed downloadable guides to help you stay at the forefront of dysphagia care. Our online forum provides a supportive community where you can connect with fellow SLPs, share your experiences, and learn from each other. To express my thanks for watching, I'd like to offer you a free clipboard kit, a 50-page guide filled with essential tips and resources for medical SLPs. You can download it now using the link in the description. I hope you find it useful.